and welcome to another Digital Photo Mentor uh, Weekly Live. I'm Darlene, and I'm here this week to demonstrate photo editing tips using subscriber submitted images. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you're one of our regulars, welcome back. So we've got a few images today submitted and um, I'm really excited to show you a few different techniques and I've got them all into Lightroom. If you're just joining in and you're new here, tell us in the chat area where you're joining from and how you found us. And if you're one of our regulars, welcome back. It's good to see you. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to play the music and head over to Lightroom. And as the uh, little sign over here is reminding you, please continue to submit your photos using that link. I got quite a few good ones last week. So just grab that link and you can submit your photos there. Okay, I am back over here in Lightroom. Get that off of there. And uh, before I get started on this, actually, I want to, let me go back over here. I wanted to show you some of my new background. So I got some exciting new things um, in terms of art. And I thought this was really appropriate. So anybody that shot film back in the day, or maybe is trying film out now for the first time, your negative is inverse, right? So I really like this little quote, life is like photography. We use the negatives to develop, right? So we end up with the positive at the end of the day. And then of course my little um, picture in the background here, which is very sort of Andy Warhol-like. So there's my new background um, scenery back over here to Lightroom. So let's see if anybody is joining in our regulars. Rob is in the chat. That is my husband and webmaster. So he's going to be answering questions and putting links in the chat. Marguerite, welcome. Lake Superior, windy, windy there. Uh, it's cloudy here today when I'm looking outside, but otherwise not too bad. We've had some freezing rain. Yay, Holly's here from New Jersey. I'm going to check my messages from you, Holly, because she got something special this week and I want to get her permission to share it. Nancy, welcome back, Nancy from Ontario. So it sounds like you and Marguerite are kind of in a similar spot there. Sheila, you remember film. So we're giving away our ages, aren't we? Deb is in Alaska. Oh, that's decent. You're above zero. You're above freezing, which is better than what we're doing. Hey, George. <laughs> He's, uh, are you, I'm wondering if you're actually on the beach with that surfboard right now. That's kind of where I'd want to be. Not surfing, but that's where I'd want to be. So again, if you're new to this channel and to this live, what I'm doing is I've got some subscriber submitted images and I'm going to be going through um, as many as possible today. Last week, we only got through two, but we had some great lessons. So I'm going to be giving you tips on photo editing as we go along. I'm using Lightroom, Luminar and Photoshop and sometimes Topaz, some of the plugins I might show you sharpen today. And yay, Rita's here. Okay, you can see I've got one of your images queued up, Rita. So that's awesome. I might start with that one. Um, and you can pick up tips from any kind of processing that I'm doing today, then how you can apply those to your images. So even if these are not your images, you should be able to um, take away a few tips that you can then use in your workflow. And as we go through also, if there's um, something camera wise or photography wise in terms of improving an image, I'll mention that too. So it's not just photo processing tips that we're going to be talking about. All right, so I've chosen these few to get started on today for specific reasons because they each, um, they came in recently, some of them, and they each had different, uh, let's say, issues or challenges and things that need to be edited. Okay, so this one came in from Linda, and she was a new, subs uh, a new submitter, so I haven't seen her images before. I'm just going to take a look and see if she's um, said anything on her submission form about what she would like to have edited on her image. Wait, let me find Linda's thing. Okay, here we go. 
Uh, she says, looking in the back of the camera, they are still really dark. She uses Lightroom and Luminar AI. I'm unable to correct them, so they look natural. Uh, cloudy days are best for shooting, but hard for me to develop. Okay, perfect. And she's got lots of different software. So hopefully Li Linda will be um, either joining in or come in and watch this um, later. Uh, Sheila, that's a great question. I actually would prefer the raw files. If you want to send me both, you can submit using that form. You can submit two images. So you can submit the raw file and your edited JPEG so that I can see what you did and we can compare it, the two. So that might be a great um, submission, Sheila. A great question. And then if you want to submit any additional ones, just fill the form out a, a second time. All right, so I've actually done um, a little bit of editing on this one already because it was very dark. So I'm just gonna reset all the settings and I'm gonna show you a few things that I did to brighten it and also what I discovered in terms of problem areas, okay? Um, recently I did, uh, last Monday actually, this, uh, this week, I did a webinar, 10 ways to improve your image quality. And I talked about the histogram and getting the proper exposure. Um, Rob, if you could share a link to that, because that that's actually the webinar recording is now available as a course. There's actually four hours of information there and 10 different topics that I covered. So exposure is one of them and reading the histogram. What this histogram tells us is that there's no information from the far right side, which is white. So I got to think about this far right. Okay, that's on the screen. There's no white in this picture and there should be because the sky should be white. So this tells me this image is underexposed. Okay. So one of the first things that I do um, is change the camera profile, but she sent me a JPEG here. So I've got limited um, ability to do that. And I don't know if she shot JPEG or if she's converted it. Okay. So I don't have the camera profile to work with here. So I'm just going to work with the regular Adobe. The next thing that I usually do is set the white point and the black point. And I do that by holding down the shift key and double clicking on the word whites. And you now see what that did is it stretched out the histogram over to the right and now you can see that the sky really is white okay i'm going to do that again and watch the histogram jump but it's stretching it specifically to the right then i'm going to do the same thing on the blacks okay so now you can see that the image has a lot more contrast and you'll notice that i haven't touched the exposure slider okay so i only adjusted the whites exposure slider affects the midtones which is where these eagles are so I'm going to give it a little bit of exposure and I'm going to double check that my whites aren't clipping now and I'm holding the alt option key. Okay, so option if you're on Mac, right? And I want to make sure that it's not clipping. So the higher I go, when you see the white here, that's clipping. And then I'm just going to pull it down until there's no clipping, no, no highlights, okay? Another thing that I noticed is that this image has a couple of technical things that need to be fixed, okay? So I'm actually gonna pull the exposure darker for a moment because when I did that and I pulled up the haze, look at what happens, okay? Can you see all these, these spots? And I'm just gonna increase the contrast a bit so you should be able to see them. Can you see all these spots here? They're sort of like um, blobs, okay? For better, lack of a better technical term, okay? Um, this is caused by water or droplets or something on the front of the lens, front or back, usually the front because the front is exposed. And how I can tell that is because dust on the sensor looks different, okay? Um, in the webinar that I was talking about, I actually demonstrated this one. So this is what dust on your sensor looks like, okay? So you'll see that it's more of dark spots as opposed to blobs, okay? They'll look like little strips of hair, but they'll be dark, okay? So on this one, it looks like I've got actually a combination of something on the lens and something on the sensor. Whereas this one is caused by um, spots on the front of the lens, okay? So whenever you see those kinds of things appearing in your image, definitely you wanna go and clean your sensor or clean your lens, okay? So I'm not gonna worry about those for a moment because we're gonna be brightening up the sky and getting rid of them anyways, okay? So they're not really gonna become a factor 
and I'll just reset those. Anytime you want to reset a slider, just double click on the word and it sets it back to zero. Okay. All right. So the other issue that I noticed, I'm going to turn this down again so you can see it, is, I don't know if you can see that here, and that's under lens corrections. Okay. I'm going to zoom in. Okay. Can you see there's a color fringe on both sides of this stick here. There's a green at the bottom and a red at the top. Okay. Yeah, let's see if we can accentuate, accentuate it a little bit. Okay, can you see that? And that is done and fixed under the lens correction panel if you're in Lightroom by checking off this little box here called remove chromatic aberration. Okay, so that means that the colors of red, green, blue are not perfectly aligned with this lens. So it's a lens default, but you can see it's really easily removed just with that click. Okay, so you don't have to worry if you have chromatic aberration, you can easily remove it. And it shows up specifically on the edges of things where there's dark to light and on the edge of the image usually. Let's see if it was on the on the eagles. Yeah, you can see it as a red or, or magenta on one side of the subject and then it will be green or cyan on the other, okay? So that actually improves image sharpness as well, okay? So I'm going to brighten them up again a little bit here. Right now I want to make some adjustments to just the birds and I may do some cropping because this stick up at the top here. I always recommend look at the edges of your image and see what needs to be there and what doesn't need to be there. I'm going to go off the aspect ratio and I'm going to come in from the top to get rid of that stick. Okay in the bottom, and I think I'm going to do something a little more panoramic like this. Okay? The other thing that I'm going to do, see that it simplifies it and gets rid of some of those problem areas. The other thing that I'm going to do is the ego is looking off to the left here. I'm going to do what's called a flip. So I'm going to flip this image, and that's under the photo settings, horizontally. Okay, So now he's kind of looking to the right, which means he's looking forward, okay? There's a slight psychological thing of when you're looking to the left, again, this is in, in society where we read left to right, top to bottom. When you're looking to the left, you're looking back towards your past, okay, or the subject. When they're looking to the right, they're looking into the future. And you can see that this guy here is looking straight up. So I don't know where he's looking. Maybe he's looking for... Uh, something else at dinner or something, a smaller bird that he wants to eat, okay? So we've done some technical corrections, some exposure corrections. Now let's get into what's called local adjustments, okay? These are all global adjustments. They apply to the entire image. A local adjustment is done with these masking tools in Lightroom, okay? If you're using Luminar, I'm gonna show some Luminar demonstrations today as well. You go into these masking tools here. So I'm going to use select subject and the program will automatically try and select what it thinks is the subject based on what's in focus. Okay. Now you'll notice that it chose the eagles and this one particular stick. Okay. So if I want to enhance the eagles, but not the stick, I want to deselect the stick here. Okay? I can literally just do subtract and I might just actually in this case paint it out. Okay, so I'm going to make sure I'm painting at 100% and I'm going to actually turn my feather down. So you see where I'm painting, it's removing the red mask. Okay, so where I see red is where the, the effect is going to apply. So now it's mostly just on the birds, okay? You can see it's got a little bit on the sky there, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. Okay, so what I want to do here is I want to give them more texture a bit of clarity and I'm not doing that to the overall image because otherwise I'm going to enhance any noise that's there in the sky. And I'm also going to pull up the white slider. Okay. So see what happens. It starts to pull out the details in their feathers okay? and then exposure only a tiny bit. So I'm going to turn this one off and on so you can see that it's just affecting those birds. Okay. Let's zoom in a little bit. Let me just go a little bit. Oops. So let's see how that's affecting them here. One more time. 
So see, it's just brightening up the birds without affecting the background, okay? So then we can close our mask. So the tricky part here is because the sky is completely blown out and completely white, there's never going to be a way to recover it, okay? Because first of all, we got to deal with all those spots. And if we darken it, it's just going to end up um, it's just going to end up being gray. Okay. So there's a couple of ways we can actually deal with that. I could try selecting the sky in a mask here. Okay. So it did a good job, right? And I can actually add some blue or I can choose down here where it says color. And a lot of people don't know about this one. It says color and a little X. If you click on it, you can literally pick a color. See that? So I can just choose blue, okay? And if I darken the sky again, now I've got a blue sky, okay? Looks a little purple, so I wanna get a little bit less purple. Okay, so now they're against a blue sky as opposed to white sky, okay? We could play around with a different color, make it a bit more vibrant or not, okay? So the saturation is affected based on what I'm choosing here. Uh, let's see. Yes, yeah, so if I use dehaze, it brings those spots out. So we definitely don't want that. We actually want less clarity and texture, which will minimize those spots. And I don't have to clone them all out. But let's see if we can't get the color a little better. There we go. Okay, so we've taken it from something that looks like that to something that looks like that. And once I've done that, I'm just gonna go back and check my clippings, check my blacks. I generally wanna clip a little bit of black, so you wanna see a little bit of those warnings, right? And I'm just playing the dance of adjust one thing, come back and adjust the other thing, right? So that's one way we can deal with the sky. The other way we can deal with the sky is to bring it into Luminar, which I think I wanted to do anyways, because these guys aren't, as sharp as they could be, okay? So when we zoom into 200%, you can see that that it's not perfect and my sky, my sky blueness there hasn't really done as great a job as I would like. So I'm gonna just turn this one off and we're gonna take this into Luminar and see what Luminar can do, right? Now the other option, okay, I wanna make sure I edit a copy with Lightroom Adjustments and for the purposes of editing today, I'm just going to use a JPEG in 8-bit, which is also something that I covered in this webinar. So what do these things all mean? What do color space mean? What does uh, bit depth, 8 bits, 16 bits? I covered all of that in that webinar. So if those are things that you're confused about, I also just published a new article on the website with a photography terms and definitions, a photography glossary. If you could please share that, Rob. Some of those terms are um, often confused Using, especially for beginners and sometimes even advanced photographers. So check out the new glossary. <laughs> hey, Daniel, um, you're over in Europe, if I remember correctly. Where? Tell us where you're joining from. Nice to have you watching. Um, there's a link. Hey, Catherine. Um, Catherine was recently on our webinar. And as Rob mentioned, she did a review of the product. So when you head over there, you can actually read some of the reviews that people that attended, um, what they enjoyed about the webinar. Okay. It's actually now a class. So rather than calling it a webinar, I'm going to call it a class. All right, so now the image is open in Luminar AI, and I'm going to go straight to the tools because I know what I want to do. Okay, I could try the Enhance Slider, which does, look at that, does a fantastic job on the eagles and the feathers. So I'm going to bring that up fairly high. Okay, but the biggest thing I want to do is that sky replacement and also details. Okay, so you can use Topaz Sharpen if you need to sharpen an image, and I've demonstrated that quite a few times. Uh, maybe you could even share my review of that product, Rob, and the link to that in the chat. But if you have Luminar AI and you don't wanna buy another product, I'm gonna zoom in even more here. 
Right? There's a little trick that you can use in Luminar, and that is using the small details. Okay, so if you pull the small details up, look at how the feathers look sharper. Okay, So I'm going to do small details, a little bit of medium, and then a little bit of sharpen. And I'm going to make sure my sharpening mass is high because I don't want to sharpen the sky. Okay? So see how what a great job that's doing on the birds, but I don't necessarily want to sharpen the sticks and you can see what's happening around the edges. I'm getting a little bit of artifacts and there's some noise in there. Keep in mind, this is a JPEG. So if you're just shooting a, um, using a raw file, you'll be able to work with this a little better and you'll get more details out. But what I think I wanna do in this one here is I just want it to apply on the birds and maybe a little bit on the stick that they're sitting on and not the rest. So Luminar has built-in masks for all of their tools, okay? So I can literally just paint this in where I want it, okay? So I'm just gonna paint it in. So notice this red again, just like in Lightroom, okay? I'm gonna paint it in on the birds. And I would do a much better job of getting a smaller brush and getting it all to these little areas, right? I'm doing sort of a quick and dirty here as a demonstration for you. And then I might do, maybe I want to do at 50% just along the stick, okay? So sharpen the log a little bit, but not as much as the birds, okay? So now I have that applied. Once I've got the mask applied, I can actually copy it and just have it in my clipboard in case I want to use that same effect or that same masking on something else. So if I want to use structure, for example, which is kind of like clarity, right? See how that applies and look what it's doing. A nice job on the birds, but it picks up those spots in the background again, okay? Now I'm bringing these up to an extreme just so you can see the effect. But if I paste that, mask in that I just did, it's not going to be on the sky now. So boom, I only had to paint that mask once, right? Now I am gonna use the structure, but not quite so high, okay? So let's, let's just look at our before and after just using those couple of tools in Luminar. So now the birds are a little sharper, let's deal with that sky. You know, I'm just gonna turn myself off for a moment here so you can see just the image. There we go. So sky replacement is under the sky AI tool and you want to pick a sky that's going to be appropriate. So in this case, I'm gonna see if there's anything in our sky pack that looks like it might fit. So because this is an overcast day, I wanna choose a sky that is gonna have a similar lighting, okay? Obviously that one is not gonna work. It's too sunny, too much bright blue sky. Let's try this one. Okay, it also has to match the scale of the, of the original image and the lighting direction, if there's a lighting direction. Okay, so you see there's kind of a halo around this. I'm gonna use this image for a moment just as an example here. There's a halo and it's not quite matching the bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna adjust the horizon position. Okay, so see it's already at the bottom, but I wonder if it will let me take it off. Nope, I want it to be all the way down there, okay? So I wanna make sure I cover the whole image like so. Then the mask refinement one is what's going to help me fill in some of these gaps that are going around it. So I usually bring up the fixed details and the relighting, okay? So that usually helps with the masking around. And let's try close gaps a little bit. That's helping too. There we go. Okay, so now I've got something close. I can play with the masking and these sliders a little bit more to get the halo. Can you see the halo around the bird? So I'm trying to get rid of that. And I'm doing that with these sliders here. That's better. Yeah, we're getting close. Okay, now I'm gonna go back and choose a different sky. So I'm not sure I have one in my sky pack that's gonna fit. I'm gonna take a look at mats, maybe one of these overly cloudy ones. Okay. Now keep in mind that if you're shooting this with a long lens, 
the background and the sky is probably not going to be in focus. Okay. So if I add something like this with these clouds, which is kind of cool, uh, let's go back to the other one. I like the other one better. So I'm going to go back there. Okay. So I can also adjust the horizon position. So I'm going to bring it down because I want those fluffy clouds. Oops, wrong one. Sorry. I want the fluffy clouds and not these ones at the bottom. So something like that. Okay. Then I'm going to turn down the focus. Let's go to, let's try two. Okay. I can also add grain. I can make it cooler. I can make the sky a bit more blue. Okay. I can brighten or darken the sky. Okay. So now we're getting closer. Now we're getting something that's a little bit more dramatic. Okay. Atmospheric haze sort of usually tones down the contrast of the sky. Okay. Now we're getting something. I think this is sort of working. All right. So see, we can go from, I'm going to turn this off. Something that looks like that to something that looks like that. Right. And when we go back up to the enhanced AI in light and luminar, sorry, now the sky enhancer will affect the new sky. See that? So I can enhance the contrast or not. So I'm going to apply this and bring it back to Lightroom. Okay. Now that's a little bit more dramatic than I may normally do. Um, but it's just showing you what you can do. And I'd probably look a little more for a sky that had not quite so much drama, right? For this one. Hey, Lynn, uh, you're welcome. Thanks for doing this in Luminar. Had difficulty getting the right sky and not knowing how to adjust. Yeah, just check all of the different sliders like I just did um, in terms of the sky, the masking adjustments. So see how I got rid of that halo and I didn't have to do any painting or masking. And then also the relight sliders. The relight sliders make a big difference because now it's matching the subject. You'll notice that the birds, the tone of the birds is a little more blue as well. So it matches the color tonality and the brightness of the new sky. Right? So I'm glad that helped. So let's take a look now at uh, what we got. I'm going to go back into our Lightroom version here and turn on this mask. Right. So that was what I attempted to do with the with this one here. Right. And maybe I can brighten the birds up even a little bit more. Right. But you see, the mask is not quite perfect. You know, it's got the sky, but I missed in here. So I would want to go in and, and probably refine this one a little bit. Right. And the only way to do that is to add. Uh, luminance range. So I'm just going to zoom in here and select this area and let's see if I can't get it better selected. Okay, so it should be giving me a better selection in there and inside of his beak. Let's see if that works any better. Yeah, see it's not perfect. So We'd have to do a lot more masking and I'd have to do us a bit paint, a bit more painting to get that one right. So let's take a look at the two side by side. Okay. So the left one is what I was able to come out of Lightroom with and the right one is Luminar. So a lot more drama. Again, I would probably play with that sky a little bit more to tone it down or find a better sky that's a little bit more subtle. Right. But it's done a much better job of blending it with the image. So there we solved um, a few different problems. We solved the underexposure, the sharpness issue, um, the background issue, and um, also the spots on the lens. We didn't even have to, to use the cloning tool to get rid of them, right? Because we just, we just replaced them, okay? So let's move on to Rita's image since she's here. Any questions about that one? Because I think there was some really great sort of learning tidbits in there. So tell me what you have learned from that first demonstration. I'm going to come back on the screen here. What did you learn from that first demonstration? And please remember to give this video a thumbs up 
as well as subscribe to the channel and set yourself notifications so that you know um, what time we're doing this every week and it will set you a reminder to come and join us. All right, I've got something special to share. Um, Holly said that I could share this with you. So I'm just going to download this and I've got a special thing to share with you. So last week, um, Holly was on the webinar and she's a long time um, subscriber and, and fan. She's been a student of mine uh, for tutoring and um, she's sent us lots of people and uh, gave us a great testimonial and uh, she said what we can do for her is send her one of the Luminar caps. So there she is wearing her Luminar cap. <laughs> Hi, Ollie. It's great to see you and see that you got the package okay. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. So Rob says you need to bend that 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 um, cap so it's not straight. You got to mold that, that ball cap. But looking good, and I'm glad you enjoy it. Got your package. Okay. All right. Catherine says, didn't know how much you could adjust the sky and the sky replacement. Yeah, you could totally uh, um, make it, like I said, blurrier. You can add grain. You can make it warmer or cooler. The um, atmosphere one will give it sort of less contrast and make it sort of like it's hazier as well as shifting it darker or lighter. Okay. And even if you then apply, um, if it's a person, you can then apply portrait bokeh AI to further even blur and affect the background as well as the enhance AI. So yes, all the other tools work on the new sky. Um, you've sure been working with the new tools that Pete showed us. I know she meant to say Pete, I need to get learning. So she's Sheila is referring to a class that we did with Pete Van and I on, um, who's a Belgium photographer and Adobe expert uh, on the new masking tools in Lightroom. So if you could share that with uh, everybody, please, Rob, because that one is also available to purchase as well. Most of our webinar recordings, um, if they're quite long, that one with Pete was over six hours or just around six hours. They are available for purchase afterwards. We also have an HDR one that I did recently, and they're usually around $19 or $29. So we try and keep those affordable for everybody. You know, Holly says, yes, that's what you're supposed to do with the lid. So ask ask the boys or the men in your life and they'll help you mold your mold your hat. All right. So if Rita's still here, we've got an image of Rita's. So she submitted this one a while ago and it's a Canon raw file. And so we'll talk about the histogram again because this one here tells me the same thing. It's slightly underexposed, but it's not such a big deal. It's within the it's within the graph. Um, ideally, you would have liked to give it a little bit more exposure, Rita, because when you look at this on the camera, you're looking for a gap over here. So you want to give it a tiny bit more. So it's touching the edge of the graph, right? Her exposure ISO 100, so we should have low noise. Uh, F7, so we should have nice depth of field and sharpness and a good shutter speed. So all good. Right. And a beautiful, nice 50, nifty 50. Right. I talked about that in um, the glossary. Oh, Sheila has a great question. Um, will I be doing Luminar Neo? Yes. Actually, we are planning to do a full course. So not just a webinar. It's not going to be a one off. It's going to be a full course. And they will be a series of Zoom calls that people will be able to dial into. And then it will be available for anybody that purchases it. Um, the course ahead of time, you'll be able to watch it indefinitely. So just like the webinars, okay? Yes, I understood Lemonar Neo. I did get that <laughs> in the Numenar, yes. Um, so yes, if you could please share the link, there's a waiting list that you can join to get on, um, get notified when that course is available, okay? And we're hearing things now that they may be coming out with the delivering Luminar a bit earlier than they suspected or expected. So I'm going to be keeping on top of that and building the course as quickly as I can get my hands on the finished version because I don't have it yet, all right? So you, you can sign up for our Luminar Neo wait list here and just putting your name on the list doesn't mean you have to buy it, doesn't mean you're obligated. It just means that we will send you a notice when we have something for you 
to sign up to, and then you can decide if that's if something you want to do. All right. Okay, so let's get on to Rita's image. So the first thing I'm going to do, and um, this came up actually in a tutoring session the other day, so I wanted to mention this because somebody was saying they couldn't find the camera profiles, right? So if you go at the top here and you see where it says camera profile, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit, okay? So up under the basic panel where it says profile, if you just pull it down, you'll only see the Adobe ones, okay? But if you go... I'm going to get move my screen over here. If you go to these little squares, you're going to see more options, okay? The other one you can do is go here and browse, and it will take you to the same thing, right? So if you're just doing the pull down, you won't see the camera ones. So that's where you have to get to to get the camera ones. So this one is on, or let's check out neutral, okay? So I'm just hovering over to see what these do, and if there's one that has more contrast. So I'm actually going to go with the landscape one, okay, because it's got a little bit more punch than the original image. And usually the colors will change, but this image is fairly monochromatic. So even though she didn't shoot this in black and white, monochromatic just means one color. So the tones in here are um, very similar, okay. If you already have pre-ordered the program, that's perfect, Sheila. Um, that you'll need the Neo uh, program, the software itself, to do the course, and they should have um, trial versions available when it first comes out. So, uh, ideally, you do want to buy the course. And if anybody hasn't bought the core, uh, the program, sorry, already the Luminar Neo, and you want to pre-order it. Um, you can do that. Please use our link. We do get a small commission and it helps us to keep the channel going and provide free uh, videos like this to you as well. So if you could share the Luminar Neo link for them, Rob, so if they can um, get Neo if they want to purchase Luminar Neo. All right. So that's the first thing. Next thing I'm going to do again is that shift double click. So shift double click whites, shift double click blacks. And I'm going to add a little more black. Remember, I want some clipping. Okay. So look at the difference already. Just changing the profile and two quick clicks on the slider. Okay. Lots more contrast. And now you can see the histogram is fully stretched out, touching the edge. Okay. So the underexposure here wasn't a big deal. And you'll notice that I haven't touched the exposure slider. Okay. Because I just wanted to bring up the whites. Okay. Exposure actually is the middle, okay? So you see when I grab the middle of the graph, it's adjusting the mid-tones, okay? And the exposure slider is going, okay? So exposure is actually mid-tones, okay? Let's see, what else do we want to do with this wand, okay? So now I've done some basic corrections. We might want to go and look at the lens corrections and make sure these are turned on, okay? That makes the edges sort of, it removes that distortion of the lens edge. Maybe I want to add an edge vignette. So I'm going to darken the edges a little bit. This is inside of our Lightroom preset bundle. So these are a few presets that I've made for Lightroom that are easy, simple one clicks. And what they do is uh, affect certain sliders. So the profiles here, if I choose a different vignette, is changing these sliders, okay? Please share the link to our Lightroom presets, Rob. Uh, Sheila says she checked on Neo today. Nothing yet. Uh, purchased the package a while ago. Yes. Thanks, Sheila. Yes, they will They will have some information out. And because I'm an ambassador, um, I will get it first uh, before people that have purchased it. So I should have it ready to start making the course before you guys have it. All right. So... Now we've got the edge darkening. I'm going to try my masking and see what it picks for a subject. Okay, so sometimes Lightroom gets it right and sometimes it doesn't. So now it's picked the tree. Okay, so the challenge with expanding this selection, if I want more of the tree, is I can't use luminance range because the whole image is basically the same tones. I can't use color range because it's also the same tones. So I could paint them in or I could just add a radio grading. So I wanna make sure I get this part of the tree as well. So I'm just gonna add a couple of radio gradients right here, just so that I get a little bit more of the tree stump. 
And I can decide if I want that one included or not. Let's make sure I get this whole one here. I want to get this whole guy here. There we go. And it looks like the tops are also missing. Okay? So the top of the tree here is missing. So I'm just doing a series of additional radio filters. I could have painted it in probably quicker, but that gives us the idea. Okay. So now I've got the full selection of the tree. Now I can make my adjustments. So I'm going to give it more texture. I'm going to give it more clarity. Okay. And sometimes I'll do dehaze because it does the same type of thing. It increases the darks and the contrast. So sometimes I'll give it just a little bit of dehaze. And I want to give it a little bit of warmer color. I want to make it a little more brown. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit of yellow. Okay. And I think I've gone too far with the texture. So now we've taken an image that was quite flat right, to something that has a little bit more punch, right? And I think I may do another one where I'm just going to do a radio filter around the entire log here. Because what I want to do is I want to actually darken the edges even more. But I don't want to do the edge vignette because it only applies from the middle. And I want it to apply more on the bottom. Okay. And then I'm just going to invert it and use that to darken the background. And the other reason I'm using the radio filter and not the vignette tool is I'm going to lessen the texture, lessen the clarity, and lessen the sharpness. Okay? So I'm taking sharpness away from the background and more onto the tree, right? See that? So if I turn the masking tools off, okay, look at the difference, okay? To really bring your eye into that log, okay? And if I was doing the same thing in Luminar, I would use those masks again, just like I masked on the birds. Marguerite, if I change my Nikon RAW file to DNG, will the camera profile still be available? Uh, yes, it should, actually. Uh, let me see if I have a DNG file somewhere here that I can show you. I have to come up with a DNG. I think I've got a few of my own in here, but I don't know if I've converted them to DNG. Um, let me see. I know where I have some. In the five-day challenge, I think. Um, let's see. Five-day challenge. I think I've got some in here. Okay, here's a DNG. Here's a DNG. Okay, so when we go in here, let's see if it proves me wrong. Wait, oops. Nope, camera matching. Okay, so I was correct. So even though I've changed it to a DNG, it still knows that this was a Fuji file. Okay. Oh, actually, this was a Canon file. Cuba, January 14. Yeah, so this would have been a Cuba file. Okay, so you notice the profiles there. And if I turn on my info, yep, Canon. So yeah, just changing that profile, look at the difference. Okay. Does that help answer your question, Marguerite? I think, I think so. All right, let me get back to where I was here. All right, here we go. So now we've done Rita's, we've done Linda's. And is Nancy with us today or Ron or Jean-Philippe? If you are here, say something in the chat because I will love to work on your image if you are here. Um, we've also got one from Mark who submitted it a while ago, a little bird. So I'm going to show you a similar trick with Nancy's image here that I just did with the sky on the eagles. So apparently it's bird day today. Um, I didn't even think about that because there's also another bird <laughs> image there. So apparently we're doing birds today. Um, all right, so look at this image. Look at the histogram, right? 
Oh, yay. Hi, Nancy. I'm glad you care. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with this exposure because it's smack in the middle. You could have given it a bit more, but this is just a really, really flat seam. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is check to see if there's a, another camera profile. Now, what camera are you using? Okay, so these are Panasonic profiles, okay, RW file. So let's see. We've got neutral, portrait, standard monochrome. So monochrome is actually kind of interesting. Okay, so we could change this into a grayscale because it's pretty sort of brown anyways. But I think this one actually gives it a little bit more punch. So we'll start there. And then we're going to do the normal shift, double click, shift, double click. And then I'm going to punch the exposure up a little bit. So see how it's moving the middle of the graph? Okay. This one I'm going to crop as well. Is I think this would make a really cool little panoramic, but I want to keep those reflections of the birds. Okay. And guess what? I'm going to do flip it again. So they're flying forward. Okay. There's nothing in this image that says it has to be facing the other way. There's no signs or, or words or logos or anything that's going to be affected if I reverse it. Okay. Now we're going to have some fun. So I'm going to say choose sky. Actually, I'm going to do a little bit less yellow overall. So I'm going to take a little bit of the yellow out of the image because I'm going to try and make this water look bluer. Okay, I'm going to bring the, the geese out and I'm going to try and make the water look bluer. So similar to what we did on the eagles. So I'm going to try select sky and see if the program gets tricked into choosing the water, which it did. Okay, so I'm going to see if it's also selecting the birds. So it looks like it's selected the birds as well. I'm just going to, yeah, see it selected everything. So that one didn't work as well as I had hoped, but it did get tricked. So next one I'm going to try is select subject and see if it finds the birds. Okay, there we go. Okay, so that is better. So now I want to invert it. Actually, I'm going to do the birds first. I'm going to punch them up a little bit. So I'm going to give them some white. So keep in mind, when I find something that's dark like this or the other eagles, just doing exposure is going to make them look flatter. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to keep some contrast. So I'm going to do white, exposure, and a little bit of shadows. Okay. And then if I zoom in, you can see that I'm starting to see that that is indeed a goose as opposed to just all black. Okay. But look at how the white defines the feathers a little bit more, okay? Okay, so we've got the birds looking nice. Now I'm going to do another mask, and it selected them really well, so I'm going to invert it. So now we have the water, okay? And this is where I'm going to dial in a little bit of blue and use that same color tone clicker that I used before. And let's see if we can't make the water look like something that looks a little bit more realistic. Okay, I don't want to go too crazy because then it's going to look fake. But let's see if we can't give it a little more color. Okay. How's that? So it looks a little bit less, um, <laughs> a little bit less sort of like the water is dirty. Now I'm using this color adjustment as well to fine tune the blue. So I can go a little more to the cyan side or a little more to the, the magenta side. So I like that. Okay, see what that's happening there. Once again, I'm gonna go over to my presets and add a vignette. And just by hovering over them. So see the problem with doing the edge vignette is it adds it to the middle, okay? But it doesn't necessarily take into account where the subject is. So if you want a vignette that's off center, just do a radial gradient. So I'm gonna make sure I cover the birds, okay? And then I'm gonna bring the exposure down, but of course I need to invert it, right? So it's on the outside. Bring the exposure down. I usually bring the highlights down as well. But you want to be careful that you've got a really nice high feather because if you have something like this, okay, you don't want to create a vignette that looks like that. Right? That's a danger. So I'm just going to make sure that the feather is higher. 
So it's more subtle and I don't vignette as much. Okay, so I might even expand it a little bit so it's more gradual, like so. Okay. And then again, the dance. So I can go back here and say, okay, I want to actually have more white. This is the highlights in the water clipping? That's totally fine, okay? Like so. If I want to darken the bottom part of the water, again, go back to my masks. And this time I might do a linear gradient and then darken from the bottom, okay? I can also reduce the clarity and texture and sharpness if I want more on them, okay? So there's a before and an after. Uh, Nancy wants to know, can you do the shift double click in Luminar? No, you can't. But what you can do is um, turn on the J key. Uh, let me show you that here. I'll just make a quick copy of your image. And we'll go to Luminar. So uh, let's just reset this totally. I'm just going to take the cropped version. Okay. And we're going to take it to, actually, we can do the raw file as well. If you want to take the original raw file with no cropping or anything, okay, you can just choose right click and export and then open source files. Okay, so that will open the raw file right into Luminar. Um, I'm not going to do that just for, again, ease of speed and, and processing. I'm just going to work with a JPEG. Okay, so that's one of the things I talked about again in the webinar is always use the highest biggest file you got. So the most data, okay, the, the most data, the most color, the most everything. So that's raw, 16 bit, and, and so on. Okay. So normally, I would take this directly into Luminar as a raw file, if so, or I would take the version that I edited in Lightroom. Okay, so what I want to do is let's just see some templates and what Luminar is suggesting. Okay, so if I just click on some of these, Right. Look at that right out of the gate. It <laughs> does a pretty good job. Right. It knows when I have fur. Right. It knows that this is a wildlife picture. Uh, let's see. Oh, wild edges. Okay. I think the first one that we clicked on, this one, or one of these, did a great job. Where's the one that I had? That one looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to take that in here. And what was your question? Oh, yes. Okay, so the um, shift double click thing. So no, it doesn't work in here that I know of anyways. No, nope. what you can do is open up the curves panel below your in your in your light panel. Okay, so open up blacks and whites. So these are closed by default, but just open them up by clicking on the the word or the little triangle. Okay. And now you could see the histogram because the, the trick is there's a tiny histogram in Luminar, but it's not super helpful, I find. Um, I like to look at the, the curve so it shows me the, the bigger histogram is in the background, okay? But if you hit the J key on your keyboard, right, and then you start to adjust things. So see how that's clipping? Now you see the reds where it's clipping in the white, okay? And you see, you should see blue. I'm actually going to use the curve because I can take it farther. Okay, so as I bring the whites up, you start to see more clipping. Okay, so see that? And as I bring the blacks up this way, we'll start to see blue clipping. Okay, well, there isn't any. But you get the idea here is that you use the J key to see the clipping. Okay, so see how the red comes on and off? So, okay. Um, we can use the smart contrast. Now, I can't use select subject here, okay? I'd have to mask the, the geese a little bit closer. But let's see if it gets fooled, right? No, it's not fooled. Okay, so Luminar, Lightroom was fooled when I chose select sky to believe that the water was the sky. But Luminar, on the other hand, was not fooled. It knows that there's no sky in this picture, okay? So let's try this accent a little bit more. But our... Our, our point of the white and the black um, clicking 
does that answer your question, Nancy, about that, right? So I'm actually going to cancel out of this one because we've already done this image, right? So uh, does that help, Nancy? Uh, let's see. So when we go back to Lightroom, yeah, there's quite a difference. Um, and I like to show things like this, and this was a great image as, as well as the eagles, as to what you can do with something that, you know, is fairly flat or or the lighting isn't optimal and you didn't have a lot of choice when you shot it, right? Because when we're dealing with this one, just changing and selecting the water and making it look more blue, things that are cool recede and things that are warm project. So now the geese are warm, right? And I could even warm them up more by going back to that mask of the geese and giving them a bit more yellow, okay? So now they're even warmer. Oops. Turn off the mask. Now you can see the geese are even warmer, so they stand out even more, okay? So everything I do in here generally is to bring the subject out. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I've got something popping up at me here. All right. Okay, let's move on. Holly has a question. Should you mostly always flip something if the heading if their heading is left? In some cases, I have a photo of flower or grass and the wind might be leaning it left. Can't be helped in some situations. That's totally up to you. Um, you know, like we can take a look at this image, for example, if I make another duplicate of it. Um, actually, let me just look at my history here. So I reset this one. Okay, so here's our duplicate copy. If I flip this one back, Okay, which one is more appealing? The original one? Actually, this is the original one. They were flying to the left or the flipped version, okay? So neither is right or wrong. It's just totally up to you. So if you have grass or trees or something that's leaning a certain way, try it both ways and then just see which one feels right. So I do a lot of things by feel as to what feels right in that situation. Exactly. Unless something has writing on it or it's a logo or something that's recognizable. So watch for things like, um, like exactly that logo on a plane or a sign on a building or something like that. Even something like this, where I have a t-shirt that has words on it. Right. Also, if somebody is in a picture and they have a ring on a wedding ring and you flip it, it's going to look like it's on the wrong hand. So generally, uh, again, I wouldn't flip a wedding photo. Okay. Yeah, no worries, Nancy. Um, you can do all of the same things in, in Luminar. Absolutely. Hello from Brazil. Welcome. Is that your first time joining us, Angela? And her vote is for the flipped version. Okay, so again, that's great because you're going with what is your gut instinct there, right? Beautiful. Welcome, welcome joining us from Brazil. All right, let's see. It's almost coming up to an hour, but I want to see if I can get another image done. We've done the birds today. So let's stay on the bird um, theme. So we'll do another bird image. And this one was submitted by Mark. And I always like to look at the exposure information. He shot it with a long lens, four, 400, 400 millimeters. So he's used a 70 to 200 with a two times teleconverter. Okay, so that extends the focal length of your lens. And there's his exposure. Okay, so because he's using a 400 millimeter lens, he's used a nice fast shutter speed. So the bird should be nice and sharp, which he is. Okay, so technically it looks good. Okay, exposure looks pretty good. Could have been a little bit more to the right, but we can fix that. And let's take a look at the camera profiles. Okay, so he's used Vivid. Um, I'm actually going to go with landscape because when I go with vivid, I find that it gives too much contrast and I'm going to be adding some when I do the whites and the blacks. So I don't want to overdo it. Okay. So choosing the camera landscape, shift, double click again. Okay. So look at the difference. Oops. Just a slight difference this time because the exposure was pretty good. Just gives it a bit more contrast and you'll notice that it's also picking up that correction um, on the lens corrections, I'm guessing. Okay. 
Yeah, so I turned that on, obviously. Okay, so I turned on the lens profiles to correct. See how it's darker on the edges? And it fixes that problem, any distortion with that lens, and any chromatic aberration. Usually, you're going to get chromatic aberration with a wide lens, not so much a long lens. Okay. The next thing I want to do is, so he's facing this way again, right? I want to crop it because this thing at the bottom here bugs me, okay? It's out of focus and it takes my attention. And the fact that the bird is right smack in the middle, I want to try and resolve that so he's not in the middle of the picture. And there's so much foreground. So there's a third of the image that you have to get through before you see the bird, okay? So when you have a lot of foreground like this, he feels further away. So just watch what happens when I do that, okay? Doesn't he feel closer now? Okay, so you feel like you're you're closer to the bird. Okay, so I'm going to do right about there. And I might even go panoramic on this one. But, of course, I'm going to flip it again. So now he's looking forward. And then I'm going to do a bit more crop so that he's outside of that middle area. Okay, now look, he's coming on to sort of this third. Okay, I like the reflection of the log, so I want to leave that. And now he's got space to look into. There's less space behind him. I'm saying him. Maybe it's a she. Okay. I think it's a sandpiper. Does anybody bonus points if you know what kind of bird that is? Okay. Okay. Bonus points for you if you know the bird. Okay. I'm going to do a vignette. But once again, keep in mind that it's going to be on the edges. So I usually will do lower medium. And then I'll do things to adjust the rest of the image, such as you selecting the subject and bringing him out again, right? So the rest didn't need adjusting. The color was good. And now we've done, it's done a really nice job picking the subject, even look at here, the branch and not the water. So I can give him a little more punch of white. I can give him some texture, some clarity. And I want to make sure I'm not clipping. So the Alt Option key when you hold it down doesn't work when you're in the masking tools, but the J key does. Okay, so you can see I want to keep pulling the white up until I get a little bit of clipping on the bird there. You see the red showing up? And then just dial it back. So I'm adding a little bit of white. I'm going to increase the shadows a little bit and the exposure a little bit and make sure I get lots of nice texture on these guys. Okay. Make sure I keep that highlight. Okay. Then I'm going to do select subject again. And do you know what? Can you think about what I'm going to do next? I'm going to invert it. Okay. So just click this invert button. So now we have the background. Okay. And I'm going to do the opposite. We're going to darken a little bit. And we're going to have less clarity, less texture, and less sharpness. So it enhances that. Um, feeling of fading out and look at the difference that makes to the bird. Okay. So if I turn off all the masks, okay, really brings him out. Okay. And it also remember how I didn't go with the vivid um, camera profile because I didn't want it to go too vivid. Let's see what happens if we switch to it now. Okay. To me, that seems a little bit overdone and too contrasty and almost too colorful. Okay. I will also use, notice I didn't use the texture and clarity sliders globally. I applied plus texture and clarity to the bird and minus texture and clarity to the background. Okay. I can also come in here to HSL, which is another favorite tool of mine. So let's say I want to enhance these colors in the bird and maybe in the background. Okay. So if I want to get a little more saturation here, I can just click and drag so I can get a little more green. Maybe I want a little more of this orange. So he's kind of glowing. And maybe I want to darken this area a little bit more. Okay. So I activated this little tool here, okay, this targeted adjustment tool where you click on it. And then you get these little crosshairs. And wherever you click and drag up and down, it's going to affect the tones or the colors that are underneath where your mouse is. Okay. So see that's affecting yellow and orange okay so it does a nice thing to the log but i lose the color then okay so i actually want to darken it a bit so look at that i'm darkening the log and i'm darkening 
this background, which makes it more colorful. And then also the bird stands out more. I can even shift the hue. So if I want this to be more yellow or green, right? So let's let's move it a tiny bit towards green. And I think I want a little bit more saturation in the in the water here. Okay. So let's turn that tool off. Okay, so even though this is a global adjustment, it's targeting certain colors specifically based on the hue or the tint, the saturation or color intensity, and the luminance or the brightness, okay? Let's take a look at our before, okay? So he's visible there, but now he really stands out, okay? Uh, let's see, going back, Marguerite says she likes the movement of the left to right movement of the geese matches your eye movement, exactly. That's exactly it, Marguerite. Bonus points. Stephanie's here. Um, I'm not sure if I have one of your images today or not, but um, thanks for joining us, Stephanie. We're doing apparently birds today. <laughs> okay. J Key works for masking. You're welcome, Deb. That works. And it does work in both Luminar and in Lightroom. Okay. And also if you're in Adobe Camera Raw, if you're using Photoshop, uh, J Key works for that as well. Most of the same shortcuts work in all of the programs with a few different exceptions. Um, we actually just redid our Lightroom keyboard shortcut PDF. If you could share a link to where they can get that, Rob. And we haven't put one up yet for Luminar AI, but I do have one. Okay, so uh, I know Nancy, you're using Luminar. Anybody else who's watching, I think Lynn is as well. Uh, send me an email and uh, I'll send you the Luminar AI keyboard shortcuts, right? Because I had that done up by our designer um, and uh, we're going to be offering that to people. I'm just going to pull it up here um, who use Luminar. So let me just find it. There we are. I think this is it. And I'm making one for Neo as well. So I'm just pulling this up so you can see what it looks like. Um, because one of the things is that there are keyboard shortcuts listed on the Luminar website, but you can't easily print them. There's, there's a lot of them. Um, so I've simplified it down into a one page that you can print out, stick on your wall when you're editing or have it with you. And then there's your keyboard shortcuts, All right? So if you'd like to have that, um, if you're already an email subscriber, send me an email and I will send you that. See? Hi, Kelvin. Welcome. If is this is your first time, how did you find out about us? I'd love to, I'd love to hear from you. Yeah, no worries, Lynn. Uh, again, just fire me an email so I remember and I will send that to you. Absolutely. Okay, I think we're going to see these to about an hour. And we had such a good theme with, with birds today. I think we're going to end there. So just a quick review. We did the birds. If you're just joining in, we did the eagles. Um, the before image was very dark and dull. It had some technical problems. We pushed that out of Lightroom. And then I pushed that out of Luminar. We talked about dirty lenses versus dirty sensors. We talked about enhancing texture and I didn't change this one to black and white Rita, but I think this one would look good in black and white as well. So you could even give that a go because there's really not much color there to begin with, right? We talked about the flipping the image sometimes. We flip both the eagles and the geese and we changed the geese image from something again that was very dull due to lighting conditions and distance to the birds into something that looks like that right and on the final one we brought out the bird and minimized the background okay maybe another good article to share with everybody um rob is the one of what to watch in your background so it's four things that are four things three four things you want to watch in your background and how to look at your background differently, okay? But you can also apply those things when you're editing, okay? So one of the tips that I use is to look at the image upside down and things that draw your eye to the image upside down are going to draw your eye 
to it right side up, right? So Rob's going to share a tip on that. Great session, Darlene. So much to learn. Great practice is the best way to learn. Yes, pack, practice, practice, practice. I mean, that's they they don't say that for a reason. And the whole 10,000 hours thing, right? You need to put in your 10,000 hours, um, not just at photography, but at editing. And this is why I do these editing sessions is there's always something new to learn. I'm still learning new things. Um, new software comes out. And I give it a try. I'm always trying different things. I'm going to be testing ACDC, which is now available for Mac as well, and um, seeing how that one works. So not everybody has Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop or wants to use it. And I, I like to try and present some other options, such as Luminar. Um, there's other things like On One. I did a review of that one. Wasn't a huge fan, but I'm I'm kind of looking forward to ACDC and see how that one works in terms of editing and also photo organizing. Right. Awesome, Catherine. Great to see you here. Um, I'm just going to pop back over to my reminder slide for everybody. Um, if you are new here and you haven't submitted photos before, um, trying to find the right size for me. If, if you haven't submitted your photos before, please do so. And remember to give a thumbs up to the video and um, subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to find my, my brand new overlay. There it is. <laughs> so that's something else we had our designer do. And um, so you know who I am and the channel is Digital Photo Mentor. You can find this weekly live on YouTube every Saturday, 1 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. That's 3 p.m. in Eastern Time or New York. And I believe that's about 8 p.m. in on the UK and a little bit later in the rest of Europe, right? And uh middle of the night in Australia, unfortunately, for those folks. So if you're in one of those parts of the country, you can find the, all of these live videos on our YouTube channel. As soon as the live is finished, you'll find it there on the channel and you can rewatch any of the bits that you missed. Yes, please do suggest a topic. I'd love to hear it. Ruth is just getting back to photography. Very helpful. I'm glad. Glad to have you. Thanks for the thumbs up, everybody, Rob says. Shooting and processing the moon. Well, uh, send me some images. Use that form <laughs> right there to send me some images. And uh, if you've got an image of the moon, I will give that a go for you. So, yeah, ideally raw. Um, one thing about processing the moon and and photographing the moon is I actually had this conversation with another tutoring student the other day is you can't get the moon in focus and the foreground or the, the earth in focus at the same time. There's simply too much difference and you can't expose them both correctly. So if you've got an image where you're trying to expose for the landscape and the moon is blown out, there's no bringing back detail because the difference is too great. And how these guys that have these great moon shots um, create those images is they take two shots. One focused and exposed for the landscape and one focused and exposed for the moon, and then they put them together, okay? So great question. Good reminder, Holly, take a look at the portrait course again. She's referring to our portrait fundamentals course. Maybe pop a link for our courses uh, in general into the chat as well, Rob, or the portrait course. Yes, if you are already own some of our courses, please remember to go back and review them. Oh, hey, AJ. Sorry, I forgot your your YouTube channel. Um, we'll see if you can find something and I'll take a look at it. And if you're not willing, if you don't want to put it onto the live, um, I'll see what else I can come up with, maybe a stock image or something that I can work with. But send me one of yours to at least give me an idea of what it is that you're trying to do. And I'll see what I can come up with. <laughs> uh, let's see. So glad you get to watch the rewind. This is where I get more out of your editing. Yes. And I find that some people say I talk too fast. So um, you can slow me down when you're watching the replay on YouTube. Okay. Uh, another request looks like composite images. So can you be more specific about that, Kelly? Um, what kind of composite images? Because that's not really my forte. Um, I do things like I will combine 
group images where I'll do a head swap, that kind of composite. But putting two images together is, is really not my forte. And that's kind of what I was talking about with the moon as well, right? So if you have some moon images and you want to send those to me and put them together, I will certainly give it a go. So final reminder, as Rob says, we're here every Saturday over the winter, winter northern um, hemisphere time and summer southern hemisphere time. And uh, hopefully we can um, get some great images. I look forward to seeing your images next week. So please keep sending them. Same time next week, 1 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Thumbs up, like the video, and we'll see you next time. Take care.